This video will explain first return, then explore from researchers at Uber AI and OpenAI. This is the latest development in the family of Go Explore algorithms. Go Explore is one of the most exciting algorithms in reinforcement learning, introducing a new way to think about exploring environments and returning to the frontier of explored states. The problem with most exploration algorithms is that by pursuing novelty, it causes them to forget how to return to the most promising state it had previously found. Go Explore explicitly stores these promising states to avoid this problem. First Return, then Explore introduces policy-based Go Explore. Instead of returning to the most promising state by just resetting the simulator state, the agent learns to return to that state by conditioning the policy on this goal of returning to that state, as well as the current state in that policy mapping from state to action. This handles stochastic environment transitions, removes the need for a robustification phase two, and provides a more informed policy to continue exploration from the state in the frontier of explored states once the agent has learned how to return to them. In addition to superhuman performance on Atari games, the authors test the algorithm on a robotic pick and place task in simulation. This is an example of an extremely sparse reward environment in which direct optimization can't even come close to solving it with a billion frames of experience. This video will explain first return, then explore, the latest improvement on the Go Explore algorithm for reinforcement learning. In addition to superhuman performance on Atari games, the authors show the capability of Go Explore on a robotic pick and place task and simulation. This presentation will begin with a background on exploration and Go Explore. If you're already familiar with this and want to skip later into the video to see what's new with first return, then explore, and don't want the background on the Go Explore class of algorithms, please check out the timestamps in a pinned comment of this video. Exploration is one of the core problems of reinforcement learning. This is due to sparse rewards and deceptive local optima. Sparse rewards describe these situations in which most of the state action pairs don't provide any feedback to the agent. For example, making an up move in a maze doesn't provide any reward, so you don't know how successful that action was. So we need exploration in order to discover all the different states and all the different rewards that are within an environment. These images further depict this problem of sparse and deceptive rewards. In the robotic pick and place task, the robot has to start from some initial configuration and then learn to grasp and pick up this object and then put it into either the top left, top right, bottom left, or bottom right shelves. And it only receives reward once it successfully put this object on the shelf. So this is an incredibly sparse reward. It has to learn this first task of picking up the object and grasping it. And it doesn't get any reward and any signal for doing that. So you can imagine all sorts of random behavior that goes on as the robot is just randomly moving the controller and the motor parameters of the arm before it even learns how to pick up the object, let alone put it into the shelf. This example of the maze navigation is a great example of combining sparse rewards and deceptive rewards. So we have these sparse rewards where the agent only gets one reward for getting to like the finish line of the maze. So one way of overcoming this problem would be to have this heuristic reward. So say the L1 distance between the agent and the reward. But as it traverses along this way, it's minimizing the L1 distance with the finish line and then it's gonna get trapped here. So this is an example of a deceptive local optima. It's gonna follow this heuristic reward until it gets here, and then the exploration is gonna have a hard time finding these novel states to get the real path to the finish line. Manual reward engineering is also difficult because of specification gaming and reward hacking. In this case, the authors of the paper want this Lego block to be stacked on top of the blue one. So they designed this reward heuristic to help with the agent by having it maximize the height of the bottom of this block. Ideally, it will pick the block up and then put it on top of this one to maximize the height of the bottom of this block. So it's difficult to construct this reward function because you might like train an image classifier to say that this block is on top of this one or put like sensors in the blocks or something like that to tell that uh, the red block is on top of the blue block. So you get a sense of how reward engineering can be challenging and then how the robot has exploited this poorly designed heuristic reward to just flip the block over to maximize the height of the bottom of the red block. There are further cases of this, such as this game, where you want the boat to get through the obstacle course as fast as possible, but rather it learns that it can just loop this way and collect these rewards. These are all examples of poorly defined rewards in which we need exploration to overcome and discover all the states so we can find out all the rewards that are available in the environment. In Go Explorer, the authors describe two main challenges with existing algorithms for exploration, detachment and derailment. Detachment describes that algorithms forget how to reach previously visited states and derailment describes that they fail to first return to a state before exploring from it. This maze example gives a better example of these terms detachment and derailment. So the agent starts off by pursuing novelty, which is depicted in green here. So it starts off by going left and explores the maze until it gets to this point in the maze. 
And then it decides, uh, you know, maybe starting from the initial state, that I want to go back this way. And I saw a lot of novelty, novel states this way. So now after it explores this way, it doesn't remember how to get back to this state. This is this idea of detachment and derailment. So it gets detached from the objective and the pursuing the novelty by going this way. And now it's derailed. It doesn't know how to get back to this state. So you can imagine, you know, this example is a bit simple because it doesn't really have too many actions to take. You just kind of either go left or right, I suppose. But in a more complex game like Montezuma's Revenge, you can imagine it explores, it gets to this frontier of novelty, and then it doesn't know how to get back to that, you know, dungeon level or wherever it had reached in the map. This brings us to the key idea in Go Explore. Explicitly remember promising states and first return to such states before intentionally exploring. So in this maze example, instead of having to figure out how to get back to that frontier of exploration that we previously had gone to, we're just going to save this state in an archive and just reboot it and then continue exploration from here. So most reinforcement learning algorithms don't separate returning from exploring. In Go Explore, we're going to explore all the way until solved. And this isn't necessarily even done with the policy network at the time. You could just be taking random actions to explore from the state in the frontier. And then you save these trajectories. So you explore it until you solve the environment or you find the reward in this you know, sparse reward environment, like the pick and place uh, robotic put, putting the object onto the different shelves task. So once you have these trajectories by exploring until solving, then you distill this knowledge into a neural network controller by training it on imitation learning with these trajectories that are found at the exploration. So most reinforcement learnings don't separate returning from exploration. And that's kind of the key idea with Go Explore. Most of these exploration reinforcement learning algorithms, they have either like an epsilon greedy, take a random action selection, or they have some kind of sampling from a stochastic policy where you say put uh, like 30% go up, 30% uh, go down, 20% left, 20% right, and then you sample from that probability density. So they don't have this explicit mechanism of return to the frontier of exploration and then explore further until solved and then distill these trajectories into the neural network. It's a really powerful algorithm for exploration. This image provides a high level overview of the Go Explore algorithm. We initialize an empty archive and then we select a state, go to that state and then explore from that state and then update the archive. So say we go to state S1. Now we're gonna save how much reward we experienced and how long it took us to get there, or how many intermediate actions it took us to get to state S1. And then we're gonna update our archive. So now say S1 is on the frontier of the archive because it's the only state in there. So now we take S1 and we go to state, say S2, explore from, uh, we go to state S1, then we explore, find S2, and then update the archive with the reward in S2. And then it took us two steps to get from S1 to S2. So now we go back to the archive and say S1 had more reward. Now we're gonna select S1 from the archive and then continue exploring from S1. So this time exploring from S1 took us to S3. And now S3 gives us more reward and we're updating the archive. So we're just exploring until solved. We go to this best state in our archive and then we just randomly take an action to explore until we find, until it's solved, until we find this sparse reward. Say, you know, the pick and place robotic task, we only get one reward when that thing has been put onto the shelf. So in that case, we're mostly measuring it by uh, hitting novel states and doing it in as few steps as possible. So you're not only uh, selecting from the archive based on the reward you've achieved so far, but how many steps it took you to get there. And then when we have these trajectories, we distill this into a neural network with imitation learning in the robustify phase. This image further depicts the exploration phase of Go Explore with more images and details to help you get a better sense of the states, the mapping from state to cell, and then the score and visits that are used in the archive and the probabilistic sampling of the frontier of this archive. So we have the state, which is say, either the stack of frames or the current frame in a game like Montezuma's Revenge or any of these Atari games or the pixel input for the robotic pick and place task and simulation. So then we map from state to cell. And the first version of doing this is to just downscale it to have some kind of downsampling where you say take an 84 by 84 image and downscale it into say eight by eight. And now you only have 64 or you know these different pixel maps and you probably downsample the pixels too. So it doesn't go from zero to 256 in each pixel. It go from like zero to eight or something like that. So that you can have this tractable uh, compression from high dimensional state into cell that you can use to have this kind of a, like a lookup table with cell and then score and visits. So this mapping from state to cell is one of the most uh, you know, open, it, open for exploration part of this algorithm, which we'll discuss more later in the presentation. So then with each cell, you record the score, the amount of reward that's been achieved so far at the cell, and then how long it took you to get there, and also how many times you've visited that state. So keeping track of how many times you've visited that state helps you with respect to novelty search and making sure you're not getting stuck in the local optima as well. So then you go to the state, and one way of doing this is to restore the simulator state. 
And now getting away from the original uh, Go Explore and now getting into first return, then explore, what we're gonna do in this new paper is we're gonna run a goal condition policy to put us back to the frontier of our exploration rather than just restoring the simulator state. So then we explore from the state, map the encounter in states of cells, and then update the archive. Once the exploration phase has found the reward in a sparse reward environment like robotic pick and place and putting the object on the shelf and only receiving the reward when the object is on the shelf, or if it's maximized reward in a denser reward environment where you say pick up a gold coin and get plus 50 along the way to like plus a thousand by hitting the finish line, which is the common way in a lot of these Atari games have denser rewards and other games have sparse rewards. So it's an interesting uh, blend between the exploration and how you design when it's solved, when it's finished running phase one of Go Explore. So now we go into phase two, the robustify phase. In the robustification phase, we take these trajectories that would come from the exploration phase. So the trajectory would be say like uh, S0, A1, S2, A3, you know, the sequence of states and actions. And we're using then to distill those trajectories into our policy network with either imitation learning, supervised learning, or goal condition policy, different ways of doing it. But the supervised learning way would be, you have this trajectory which maps from a state action pair into the next action. So you're gonna have your policy network take that same loss like Y minus Y prime with that imitation learning with the uh, target action from the trajectory. So if the trajectory took A3 and S2, then that's what the policy network should do as well. And the authors find that the robustified policies achieve higher scores than the best found trajectories. And they attribute this to fine-grained optimization where you can use uh, proximal policy optimization on these distilled policies to get uh, further fine-grained reward optimization and then off-policy learning. These, uh, they can still learn from the not optimal trajectories. So you might have this one sequence that produces the reward, but you can still have these other sequences that were found during exploration that the uh, policy that's being uh, trained with imitation learning or other kinds of off-policy sampling is what you would probably do with the bad trajectories, and it can still learn from that to get a better sense of the environment. So with respect to this off-policy learning, just the idea is that you might take that best trajectory and do supervised imitation learning, copy these actions exactly, and then you might do like off policy learning, maybe with important sampling or something like that, so it can learn from the bad trajectories as well to get more of a sense of the environment rather than just knowing this one uh, narrow trajectory to get to the goal. One of the most open areas for exploration in Go Explore and also kind of described as the crux of this algorithm is this mapping from states to cells in the archive. So take this high dimensional RGB pixel map of Montezuma's Revenge. You can imagine then downsampling it, putting it to grayscale, and having this version of the same frame. But then what they do to form this archive table is go from this to this. So what you would do is further downsample, let's say this is like eight by eight, and you would reduce the uh, range. So as we described the zero to 256 pixel values, go to say like zero to four or zero to eight or something like that. Not zero to four, meaning these di slightly different shades of white, but like zero to four, meaning either pixel value zero, 64, 128, you know, or like 200. So it's like a better way of mapping it from the high dimensional state to this lower compressed cell if you're doing this lookup table, but you might end up having some kind of collision where you're mapping states to the same uh, low dimensional representation when they really don't correspond to the same one or other things like that that you know cause this to be losing too much information from high dimensional pixel map into the compressed cell representation. The authors describe these two dimensions of issues with the state to cell mapping. Lack of aggregation for one cell for every frame, which is computationally inefficient. So imagine using this entire frame for, you know, this entire high dimensional representation where you have this massive lookup table then, or you have on the other end of the extreme excessive aggregation where you're mapping all these frames into the same kind of cell. So imagine this looks like it's maybe like eight by eight or something like that. Imagine four by four, it, you'd have a ton of collision and that would cause all sorts of problems with this algorithm. So they note in their paper that they have this dynamic weighting where they're gonna dynamically update the parameters of the downscaling as they go through training so that they can overcome this blend of either lack of aggregation or excessive aggregation. Another interesting area of first return then explore is the authors look at explicitly adding manual encoded domain information to this high dimensional pixel map to low dimensional cell mapping. So by adding this domain knowledge about say uh, how many keys it's collected or like which room it's in, you see this huge performance boost compared to the previous Go Explore algorithm and achieving superhuman performance, passing the human world record in these games. So this uh, table showing that adding manual domain information from high dimensional state to low dimensional cell mapping in this archive of phase one of the exploration shows that this feature mapping still leaves something to be desired. So a similar algorithm is, not a similar algorithm, but a similar idea to how can we improve this high dimensional state 
to low dimensional mapping is the curl paper where they use contrasted self-supervised learning to facilitate this mapping from high dimensional uh, pixel maps into lower dimensional representations that can be used for in this case building this archive table but it would be tricky to say can self-supervised learning achieve like find these features that come from manual domain information such as how many keys is collected or something like that so you might need like a recurrent way some other way of trying to do this high dimensional state to low dimensional mapping but this shows that domain information uh, achieves a superhuman performance the key novelty in first return then explore compared to previous iterations of the go explore algorithm is how we're going to do going to the state and then exploring from the state so the previous go explore algorithm goes to the state in something like an atari game by just restoring the state of the simulator you don't have to actually traverse all the way back to that state you can just restore the simulator to get back to that frontier so sort of like in the maze navigation example if you could just you know like hack it and put yourself right into the maze to continue your exploration so this works really way in, well in simulation but as the authors imagine the authors still uh, point in jeff clune's talk uh, linked to later in this video you, most of this robotic learning is going to be going on in simulation anyways so in this pick and place task you actually can still do this restore to the simulator state but there's still something to be had from the way that we're going to do this in policy-based go explore so now what we're going to do is do goal conditioned exploration where the policy is going to have to learn how to get back to this state and that's this idea of first return then explore and the second benefit that comes out of having this policy learning throughout exploration how to get back to the state is that you can then use that policy to explore from the state so imagine this pick and place task you don't really want to be doing random actions from each state you'd like to have some kind of policy that can make you know a more informed decision about how to explore the state if you're just making random actions in this nine degree of freedom robot it's going to take like a billion frames to get to the you know putting the object in the shelf so the idea of policy based go explore is the policy is going to be doing a mapping of actions given the state and then the goal so it's trying to return to the given state in the exploration frontier from a current state so say it's currently in s0 the policy would usually give you an action for s0 but now it's also taking as input s0 and then this goal goal say reach state s5 and this is this idea of uh, goal conditioned policy exploration so it's learning to return and then it's doing this self imitation learning where it's learning how to imitate the trajectory it had taken earlier i thought this idea of goal conditioned policies also has an interesting connection with upside down reinforcement learning upside down reinforcement learning is an interesting idea whereas instead of just trying to maximize the reward the agent is trying to achieve a specific amount of reward so say it's in like the mario brothers game and it's specifically trying to reach 40 points or whatever rather than just trying to reach as much points as possible so I think it's interesting as well to look at this comparison with upside down reinforced learning and adding this extra conditioning from the state to action mapping in the policy. Another thing that's interesting about this is that we're imitating trajectories. So rather than doing just kind of an open ended uh, get to this state in as many actions or however you think that it takes you to get to this end goal state, you have each supervision on each state action pair. So say you're at S0 and you have this trajectory that gets some reward it says take left so whatever you predicted whatever state you were trying to do say you went right you could use supervised learning to say oh you're supposed to do left here and you have a similar kind of y minus y prime loss function that you can use with the cross entropy loss to train the parameters of the policy network with this like very densely structured reward from our trajectory from like the optimal frontier of the exploration so it isn't just this open-ended uh, go get to this goal however you can you have this supervision on every step you're taking in the environment this is the idea of imitation learning where you can imagine uh, pre-training these policy networks or value networks by having these examples where you have this dense structure and you can use supervised learning to start to train the policy network and then in other cases like this is like a control task but you can imagine like in uh, alpha go what they do is they start the network by having it copy expert moves do the same move that the expert makes in this uh go board configuration and then it takes that experience that's just learned and starts improving on it with self-play another example of this if you're looking for a more say interesting application than robotic control or playing uh, these atari games is in chip design with reinforced and learning they also seed this model by having it uh, do the supervised imitation learning with 10,000 manual chip designs and they show how this greatly improves the uh, designing of these chips downstream by having this initial imitation learning data set to learn from so an interesting behavior that arises out of doing this is that policy-based Go Explorer can handle stochasticity throughout training. So say we have this optimal trajectory, do left, down, down, up, right, but really we have this stochastic environment where either though we commit to doing up, 20% of the time we're going down and then 5% of the time we're going left or right. So this having this kind of uh, doing the policy to return to that frontier of state 
handle once you handle this stochasticity in the environment where it might be really hard to get back to that frontier of the state and there might be like more randomness involved with the trajectory than is contained in just that sequence of left right right up right or something like that so then the next benefit that comes out of this is that exploration continues with this policy once we achieve that frontier state we explore with this policy rather than just doing random actions and that's better for these high dimensional control tasks like the pick and place robotic simulation task you want to have a more informed exploration policy than random actions and further we remove this phase one phase two pipeline because we're kind of doing robustification and doing the learning of the policy network throughout phase one of exploration the authors test this on the robotic pick and place experiment in simulation and this is an example of an extremely sparse reward task it starts off with this object on the table and has to learn not only how to grasp it and then put it onto one of these shelves so direct optimization with proximal policy optimization does not solve this environment even after trading for a billion frames so you can also imagine you know getting a billion frames might take a while depending on your computing setup in these two charts they're comparing the go explore exploration phase with a proximal policy optimization technique that does have a count based intrinsic motivation algorithm and you see how much better the go explore algorithm performs at reaching these states at all the top left put the object in the top left shelf or bottom right shelf and then it further shows the curve if you have this pipeline of explore and then robustify and comparing how quickly that performs well compared to trying to directly optimize and not really directly optimize but still have some kind of intrinsic motivation with the direct optimization there's an interesting connection between go explore and the map elites algorithm in map elites these robots have this table of different behaviors or skills such that you could knock out this leg and the robot can still figure out how to walk without the leg it originally had so this is a really interesting paper robots that can adapt like animals where you instead of having this archive of different states you're reaching you have this archive lookup table you know dictionary whatever you want to call it of these previously learned behaviors so that if it gets its leg knocked out it can revert to this other way of walking and adapt another interesting area of reinforcing learning is world models or model-based reinforcing learning where agents can learn inside of their own imagination so i was wondering if you could get enough data from the environment such that you could do exploration within your imagination I don't have much of an idea of how this would work but i think it's an interesting kind of thing to think about is how does world models fit into something like the go explore algorithm the next dimension of this is the sim to real transfer we see that you know we're learning in simulation with the pick and place task so i still think it's just here are some resources some interesting blog posts that you might want to check out if you're interested in that sim to real problem as well if you want to learn more about the go explore algorithm linked in the description of this video is jeff clune's talk at rework about go explore a really great overview of the different things and you can really see the you know the direct what the author of the paper is one of the authors of the paper is thinking about with respect to these different dimensions of the go explore algorithm you can also see a go explore applied in these text adventure games where you're interfacing with the environment through text prompts in this paper exploration based language learning for text based games thanks for watching this video on first return then explore one of the most exciting algorithms in reinforced learning hopefully from this video you got an idea of why exploration is important the go explore framework for having the phase one of exploration phase two of robustification and then how this framework is built upon in first return then explore with policy based go explore thanks for watching and please subscribe to henry ai labs for more deep learning and ai videos